Good afternoon, my loves. Welcome to Maverick Baking and welcome to another What I Eat video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Kelly and here we share all kinds of easy recipe videos, foodie challenges, lots of delicious chocolate reviews, even more coming up to Christmas and these kind of What I Eat vlogs. In the past couple of months, I've shared two different What I Eat in a Week for Breakfast videos because breakfast is my favorite meal of the day, as you guys have probably guessed by now. And I'm always posting What I Eat shorts for you guys but a couple of you wanted to see what I eat for lunch, not just what I eat in the morning. And you know, how could I say no? <laughs> so today I am sharing with you seven days worth of lunches in my life. This is not perfectly kind of curated to show all healthy, to show all balanced, to show all homemade, or to show all fancy and super stereotypically Italian either. This is just a realistic set of seven lunches consecutively in my life. Which means, much like my breakfast videos, you will see a couple of meals out, you will see a little bit of fast food, you will also see some lovely, wholesome, home-cooked things, some leftovers, some light meals, some heavier meals. You'll just see a realistic and kind of intuitive eating vibe to what I eat in a week for lunch. Let's get into it. We started the week off with a lovely, slightly lazy pasta lunch. I've been utterly obsessed with pumpkin ravioli this season, not only because they are cheaper than ever, but because they're absolutely delicious. It's that gorgeous combination of sweet and savory. So I cooked up some kind of double cream with some Tabasco, Worcester sauce, some rosemary, some salt and pepper, a little bit blasphemous, I know, but cooking those ravioli for just a few minutes then tossing them in this thick, creamy cozy sauce an absolutely delectable way to start the week and of course some bread to mop up that sauce day two we were feeling a little bit like treating ourselves francesco invited me out for one of these very classic all you can eat sushi menus we love sushi and this was a fabulous way to spend the day we had some miso soup some classic kind of sushi rolls some sashimi i had some wakame on the side we had some kind of grilled stuff as well absolutely delicious and of course a fortune cookie to finish off. Day three was a particularly cold day so along with my hot water bottle I decided to warm myself up with some leftover soup from the night before. This was a slightly ugly but absolutely gorgeous spiced kind of curried sweet potato and lentil soup that I had made for dinner the previous evening and it was absolutely perfect. Again, that lovely blend of sweet and salty, nice and affordable thanks to the ingredients being lovely and seasonal and this was just absolutely perfect. We didn't have any bread in the house because I was too lazy to go out and buy any, so instead I had a couple of packets of these like salted crackers with some Philadelphia cheese spread. Very lovingly and lavishly on top. Just a really nice, light, but cozy and satisfying lunch on this particularly chilly day. I was very, very happy with this. On day four, we ended up waking up late and breakfasting late and basically not really having a lunch of any sort. So this was more of a kind of classic Italian aperitivo at like 4 p.m. instead. So we decided to head to a local bar. I got myself a spritz bianco with a lovely little olive in there. This is one of my favorite Italian drinks. It's white wine, lemon juice, and I believe soda water. And with that, we got the usual crisps and things. And we got a couple of these little sandwiches known here as tramezzini. Mine was with some sliced mozzarella and just some roasted vegetables and herbs. Just nice and light, a little kind of snack to allow myself to have a kind of bigger dinner later that evening, but exactly what I needed that day. On day five, we were <laughs> in that classic position of going out to do a big kind of grocery shop and then not actually having the energy or the interest in preparing our own food afterwards. So we headed straight to Burger King. <laughs> Now, Italian Burger King, I must say we both commented on, and despite the fact that we both love a bit of very occasional fast food, Italian Burger King feels like healthier and less salty and less kind of deliciously trashy than other countries' Burger King, but it filled a hole nonetheless. Day five was another day of needing some cozy, wholesome leftovers in contrast to the day before, and I had made this if I do say so myself, utterly bloody delicious kind of spiced vegetable stew the evening before. Tomatoes, lentils, chickpeas, kale, courgettes, just loads of kind of 
veg that we had in the fridge and freezer to use up and I had this with just a little bit of relatively plain couscous on the side and um, just with a little bit of kind of olive oil, salt, pepper and oregano. So I allowed that to kind of just steam up for five minutes while I reheated the stew just in a regular little saucepan and it was absolutely delicious. Again, really, really kind of cozy and wholesome, but absolutely delicious. The couscous is great because it only takes just a few minutes to prepare. And of course, the joy of leftovers is being able to indulge in a kind of lengthy homemade meal without any of the, you know, the length. So, <laughs> and of course it made a nice amount of leftover couscous for it later that day. <laughs> Look at the amount of steam coming off. This was before we had turned on the heating in the house. So you can see the contrast of hot food and very cold internal air. <laughs> I promise this wasn't some kind of smoke bomb on the plate or like dry ice. I was seriously, seriously happy with this meal and I will be making it again. And on day seven, we had a few more courgettes to use up. As you can tell, we bought plenty this week and had filled up the freezer with them. And I didn't really fancy anything super heavy, but I knew I would need a snack at some point. So I just melted some butter in a pan threw in some of the courgettes straight from the freezer. Not the best, they look kind of ugly when you cook them like this, but they taste and are exactly the same. And just whisked up a couple of eggs with a splash of milk and a little bit of salt and pepper and just let them gently cook. Didn't fancy any cheese or anything this day. The butter did the job fine enough. And I just plated this up. And instead of having any kind of salad on the side because it just wasn't really the vibe that day, I decided to have just a little bit of um, <laughs> the pride, a little bit of uh, some breadsticks on the side of this particularly ugly and overcooked, but still very, very tasty omelette. <laughs> I don't know if you guys feel the same, but omelettes are something that I never really think about, but I forget how much I enjoy them when I actually make them. So I was very happy to have this one. So that is what I eat in a week for lunch. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you found it somewhat entertaining, a little bit inspiring perhaps. Maybe it just gave you some ideas for what to have for lunch today, tomorrow, next week. Or it was just, you know, a relatively pleasant way to pass approximately eight minutes of your life. <laughs> if you guys would like to see more of this kind of video, do, do please let me know. I would love to know whether you prefer the kind of breakfast videos. I'd like to know whether you'd like to see some more lunch or do you want to see some dinner? Do you want to see some snacks? Or would you just prefer some kind of full length, what I eat in a day kind of stuff instead? Please do let me know your thoughts in the comments. They are always appreciated. But that is all I have time for today, guys. Thank you so, so much as always for watching. I hope you treat yourself to something delicious today too, and I will see you for the next one.